thank you to the Patreons for supporting this video. Not only do you get your name at the start of these Patreon funded videos that Schmeichel personally edits himself, but you also get access to all of these bonus reviews, including the very latest upload. It's a bridge review. It's a bridge review. It's a bridge review. That's 30 minutes long because it's the top 69 bridge reviews that I've ever done. But yes, hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, today I've battled the loading screen remembering how many mods I have installed. And I've hoped that I still have installed the one that lets you like extend your hangar so I can just keep building up and up and up. Uh, don't look so worried there, little friend. Things are going to be okay this time. So we'll start a new game, which makes us very happy. We will call this compensating. Bollocks. <laughs> we will call this compensating. And of course, this is funded once again by the UK Space Agency. So we've loaded up. Let's get into the vehicle assembly building of the VAB. And then I guess first things first, shall we? Let's make sure we have the headroom for this. So I guess to start with... Let's just grab a fairly long fuel tank, and I guess... And how do I how do I copy? I thought I'd just hold alt to copy. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. And we just keep building up to make sure we have the headroom. Yes, the mod still works. We can build in the rafters, and we can build above the rafters. Okay, so that's good. That's good. We have no limits, which is always nice. Plus, we get a lovely view of the scenery. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me just press that mouse button that no one ever presses so I can unlock my mouse wheel. <laughs> Um, then we'll take all that and press delete and we're gonna we're gonna start building so basically I want to I want to try and get a snake into space again I'm pointing the wrong way now oh, no. and but this time I actually want it to be like an impressive snake a full-on mega snake hence the name mega snake right well essentially I want to build this snake in sections so if I can get one small section to work I can hopefully then just stack it and then that will be fine right? I'm sort of thinking if I start up the top and work down, that should be easier. All right, so I think I want some sort of... Oh, yes, here we go. A tricoupler. So that goes under there quite nicely. I can then stack those underneath that. And then those underneath that. And then we got a quite nice triangle shape, but snakes aren't known for being triangular. So my question is, can I... Yes, I can rotate that way. Okay, that is good. So I think what I want to do on each corner, I want like that. Maybe if I take that one and rotate, I can then grab another one. Shove it. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, this is good. This is good. I think I know what I'm doing now. So we'll just rotate those. We'll copy those onto there. And then we have that layout. So now... What I'm thinking here, we do fuel tanks around the outside and then our engines in the middle. So perhaps this fuel tank I have is probably a good one to use because it's quite tall. Yeah, I also think black and orange is more snake colored. So we'll grab more of those, shove them all the way around. All right, so we have our fuel in a sort of hollow circle shape. I mean, it's not the most circular of shapes. I will give you that. But we have room inside for the propulsion. So let's head into engines. And we need something powerful enough to lift this segment up. And we then, of course, need somewhere for our crew to sit. And then because we really, really do care about safety, I'm going to put a load of parachutes on this so we can retrieve it and use it again. Because that is the cornerstone of efficient space travel. So big boy parachute on the top. And of course, the most important thing thing about this entire snake system it's the uk space agency logo but of course we are scaling this thing up right let's launch oh so sadly i can't use the external command thing okay okay we'll put the kerbal inside command pod on there very safe parachute on top look how big it is then launch Right, so Jebediah, you are you are in the safety of there now. You were gonna be on the outside, but I've I've been kind to you. So I guess we find out. Do we have the power to lift off? Yes, we do. Yes, we do indeed. Um, oh, and it actually flies reasonably. Um I think I pressed SAS a little bit too late. But if we go again, check this out. I've got an inline stabilizer. Uh, it seems to be doing the business. We're going up so straight. I feel like we actually have too much power, if anything. So we're only half throttle. If I wang that way up, we are going fast. Oh, look how much fuel we have as well. This is exciting stuff. Okay, so basically, if I if I reduce the engine to something a bit 
a bit simpler, I think. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We should be good. Now, the question I have... There's probably a better way of working this out, but if that is sort of a thousand kilonewtons, I probably need about 500 in order to lift this thing up. So can I combine smaller liquid fuel engines and add up to 500 kilonewtons? Um, and yes, I realize I probably should do some background research to work out how this game works, but that's not how I roll. I like to fly blind. Wait, I like the sound of the poodle. Not only is it a dog, but also the engine doubles as a barbecue when at low power. Yeah, so that's 250 kilonewtons. But that's in a vacuum. So I think I need at sea level. So I'm guessing one skipper should do the job. Oh man, it's huge. It is huge. Oh no, I launched the parachute. I launched the parachute. <laughs> um, anyway, sort of proof that we have enough power with that one anyway. Probably too much, if anything. I tell you what, let's just let's just get a poodle in there and see how it how how it fares. Yeah, this time I'm going to add another phase so that I don't parachute at the same time though, right? So poodle up to full power. Okay, the poodle is is pathetic, unfortunately. Yeah, very fuel efficient though. I'm not using any fuel. Despite being at full throttle, we're just <laughs> We're not going anywhere. Now, whilst you might think, well, Matt, that was an absolutely pointless test. Like you didn't go anywhere. No, I've learnt that my my logic was sound there. So two options, I can find another engine or perhaps I could just add more poodles. So if I get a pack of poodles in here, not my favorite dog, I will admit that. That's reserved for Paddy and Labradors. What if we go for that? I assume being clipped into each other will be fine, right? Right. All right, let's turn up the throttle. Okay, still not still not quite enough. And but look, we're making we're making steam. We're making smoke. Now, we're also using a lot more of that fuel up. Not ideal. So, I'll tell you what, instead, stick with the original, but I can scale it down. So, if we go... I think that's half the size, so it should be half as efficient. So, full power. Do we lift off? Not quite, but I reckon my math is pretty close, because we got to remember, as we stack the snake up, we're not going to have all of these. We're literally just going to have fuel and the thruster. So, technically... As we add more, we'll actually we'll get more powerful. What I want to do, right, I'm gonna take Jebba, <laughs> take Jebba Dyer out. All right, you're okay, mate. You're okay. You're good. You're all good. And um, we're basically we're just waiting for the fuel to run out because we know that the ship will get lighter as we burn the fuel. And I'm also intrigued to know if we if we step under here, are we okay? No, <laughs> oh, I just killed Jebba Dyer. Why did I think that would... Oh, why did I think that wouldn't happen? All right, cut that out, editor. I'll get destroyed in the comments if we leave that one in. But yeah, all I need now is a way of transferring this engine down to, like, the next level. So I sort of need to link all of these together. Now, is there a way of using the tricoupler to do that? Hmm, okay, so I can place these upside down. Can I then take an upright one and place it in the middle... Hmm, it's going to be harder than I thought. One eternity later. All right, so what if we just do the same thing, but upside down then? Much, much, much later. All right, so we've got that. Then we just need to add another few just so we can get that node in the middle. Although it's going to be upside down. So maybe, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that, Matt. We basically just need to copy all of this down to the... <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a disaster, I can tell. Right, let's copy another one. We may as well go all out on this. And let's take it for a spin. All right, it's probably going to fall over, so I need to, like, launch straight away with full power. SAS. Oh, no, the parachute went off. <laughs> um, 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 uh, uh, uh. Oh, look, Jeb's okay, though. Safety is the UK Space Agency's number one priority. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Didn't I... Is it called, like, launch towers or something? Yes. So I'm pretty sure we can use this. I mean, last time I was told about launch towers, I thought you guys meant launch towers into space. Um, and we launched the Eiffel Tower into space. But no, today... So if I do these... If I do these, like, to the top, then it will just hang, right? So this is exactly what I need, I think. Oh, man, I feel like I'm actually... I'm actually kerbling. Look at this. Oh, hang on, where are you going? Where are you going, mate? What are you doing? What? Oh, no, I've missed some. Oh, no, I haven't missed... Have I missed some? I think they're just not joined together properly. I might have to add some struts, you know. Um, but for now, let's turn on SAS. Let's hit the throttle. Oh, good. Oh, bum. <laughs> I didn't realize it works like that. You gotta, you gotta turn the throttle up first. 
Okay, well, oh, now I know for next time. Right, Jeb? <laughs> yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Okay, now he's not fine. Okay, but now it is time to get on down because I am gonna strut my stuff. Oh, yeah. Ooh, strut it. Yeah, you know how to work it. Ooh, now that is strutting. Okay, this is looking much better, much more stable. I'm glad I did that. Maybe, maybe not the edit. Now I'm gonna add, I think I need to add another one of those and put the rockets first because I feel like I need to be at full sort of power before the launch towers go. So SAS on, engines fired, turn up the throttle and then we let go. More throttle, more throttle. Oh, balls. Okay, so yeah, because I've added loads of stuff in the middle, uh, that's added more weight. So perhaps our engines need to be scaled up slightly. All right, there we go. Staging done. Engine scaled up. Let's give her a launch. Oh, no. <laughs> we still don't have the power. But I might just have to scale these up to like normal size. Although that looks sort of successful. See, my first instinct was to have this at a normal scale. Unfortunately, stupid brain and logic tried to get the better of me. Always trust your gut when you're engineering. That's sort of what I'm learning. Wait, <laughs> is this engineering? <laughs> hmm, don't answer that. All right. Full power. Oh, no, it's blowing up. It's blowing up. Oh, the rest of it blew up. <laughs> well, at least this was successful. I think it's because the, the flames were sort of... Well, if you remember when Jeb walked under there, apparently the same thing happens when your rocket goes under. Oh, that's annoying because look how successful this is. We are well and truly going up into space. Now, the annoying thing is I can't really keep a gap in the middle because, well, that's where my that's where my engines go. I wonder then, do I want to make longer, longer fuel sections so that the flame has less impact? Let's give that a try. So we delete all of that, sadly. Uh, we then, oh, this is going to be quite awkward, actually. We then want to take that off and that that right so now we just copy these down do we think one will be enough like how big was the flame that it did damn it we might need two i'll try one for now so i just need to fuel all of these nodes up then try and attach these back to where they went hoping that the the struts happen automatically oh and i remember where they go that doesn't look right that does not look right oh balls well, not ideal, but at least it'll give me some idea of whether it's long enough for the flame. And the answer to that is no, it, it exploded instantly. So I'm glad I didn't waste time making it all perfect because uh, that would have been a waste of time. Oh, by the way, whilst I build this, I have an amazing glory time with Matt. Uh, so an old colleague of mine messaged me the other day. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, basically, he said, you'll never guess what our boss... Now, our boss was called Reese, by the way. He said, you'll never guess what Reese's son told him the strongest shape in engineering was. Now, bear in mind, Reese is like a very senior engineer. He was like the head of our department in, in our office. Um, and he goes to his son. He's called Hugh. Hello, Hugh, by the way. Uh, thank you for this story. Massively appreciate it. It's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, so he went to his dad, Reese. He said, dad, do you know what the strongest shape in engineering was? You've been lied your whole life. It's not a triangle. It's a... <laughs> the best thing is... The best thing is apparently Reese knew instantly that he's been watching my content. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, Hugh, tell your dad he's a wicked boss and keep reminding him that the strongest shape is a... <laughs> uh, that made my day, that. And that was story time with Matt. All right, so I've made these four times longer because I figured I probably need to make the engine more powerful. But let's just see. Please be long enough to not burn up all that stuff underneath. Oops, I dropped it first. All right, so power up the engine. Yes, there's no bars. There's no bars. Okay, the question is, are we powerful enough? Because we've added a lot more fuel, so a lot more weight. Bomb holes. Let's try a 1.4. Right, nothing's burning. So let go. Don't quite have enough power. We're not falling fast, though. So we're close. We're definitely close. Oh, look at this. Look at this. So a 1.6 scaled engine is like the perfect height, pretty much. I mean, we should probably go a little bit bigger because we're not actually going up. Throttle is all the way. Uh, oh, we can. We can actually steer this thing a little bit. Here we go. There we go. Yes, we're gaining altitude. We're gaining altitude. Um, I can see, though, my my strutting stuff didn't work as well. So I probably need to do a bit more strutting um, and basically 
It looks like I need to strut everything. So if I give this like a little bit of a jiggle. Yeah, like not nothing's attached. Why is nothing attached? Right, anyway. We'll add another, another 100 mil, I reckon. We'll add a load of struts to the bottom. I mean, I feel like at this point, I probably should have just used the auto strut thing. But this feels a bit more like crafted. It's like handmade. We at the UK Space Agency, we know that people pay a premium for handmade spaceships. Because you just don't have that level of care and craftsmanship from a factory made ship. Right, so did it make a difference? Let's launch. Whilst it appears less successful on the outside, internally I'm feeling like it did actually make a difference. And if we stack this into a worm, it will work perfectly. Oh, and I do I do apologize. I've been calling this a worm. It's a mega snake. Very offensive to the snake and the worm industries. Alright, so three part worm. Oh man. <laughs> you can see the struts are literally <laughs> holding this thing together. They are the glue. Um, still, I'm confident. I am confident. So let's get the the engines burning. Oh, we got a bit of movement. That's fine. Let's let go and let's watch this thing go. Now, launch towers, they're sort of getting in the way, but we've managed to get past. We have exploded. Um, okay, okay. That, that probably wasn't ideal. I tell you what we could do, though. We could just add some boosters to the top, get it into space, and then let the snake do its thing once it's up there. That sounds like a plan to me. All right, so I just had the UK Space Agency on the blower. They said, uh, Matt, this is pretty good, but um, make it bigger. Let's grab all of this and then we it's launching into space. I finally did it. And then I can copy, I think, from that part down, right? Boosh. And then we'll just do that a few more times and then copy that last little one to the bottom. No, that's that's too low, Matt. That is too low. So undo that. Oh, God. Wait for the frame rate. <laughs> There it is. There it is. Then we got the towers. So we'll shove these up the very top. <laughs> it's so tall. Are these towers like strong enough to do this? So one there, one there, and one there. And then let's look down. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, let's press launch and see how long it takes to actually load this thing. Okay, we're good. Oh no, wait. Oh, it's stretching. Oh, did you see that? It's stretched. And the bottom's just blown up because it stretched so much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can literally oh you can see it all being pulled apart it's too heavy for its own good i don't even i don't even think i can go look at the bottom to see how much is left uh, good news is the launch towers they're pretty they're pretty sturdy really all right so sas on throttle all the way up and then boosh okay we we i don't think we have the power although do we do we the bottom's exploding <laughs> okay i think I think this may have gone slightly wrong. I will not lie to you. So I think first things first, let's head to the bottom. I think we'll, we'll lose the bottom section. The stretch was too much. So we'll grab that. We'll press delete. Then that should be fine. I mean, to be honest, I should probably copy that to the bottom because most rockets, they have they have an engine at the bottom, right? Uh, then what I want to do next, if we head back to the top, I think I want to add some boosters just so we've got a bit more thrust because there is a lot of weight here. I think boosters will be my best bet. So I'm going to I'm going to shove decouplers on the side, probably just three boosters. I'm not going to I'm not going to overdo this. We want it to be sensible. The UK Space Agency, we want it to be sensible. So let's pick the most powerful booster there is. So that one's 12,000 kilonewtons. That's pretty good. Oh, it's a big boy. It's a big boy. We will shove it on there, though. All right, so that's those on. We then need some nose cones because aerodynamics are important. So that's those on. Then we decouple the boosters once we get to space, which will definitely happen. I'll tell you what, might be worth shoving some, like, big fins on this just so we can steer a bit easier. So if we shove that, like, there-ish, probably scale it up a bit. That should give us good movement, right? So I'm pretty confident this will work. I just need to make it look a bit more like earth-eating worm. Right, so I've made some tweaks. Loading times have increased, but I think it's going to be worth it. So here we go. We are in. We are in. Oh, no, the boosters are falling. Why are the boosters falling? All right, they haven't exploded for some reason. Uh, it seems they didn't attach to the top coupler. Only the bottom one. Oh, man, this is going mental. This is going mental. I think the Kraken has attacked. I built a space worm, but I've ended up with a Kraken. Anyway, SAS on. Let's 
launch this thing. Oh, dear. Okay, well, uh, that didn't go amazingly. I do know how to fix this, though. Strut. All right, so that is fully strutted. The planet-eating snake mouth is ready to be launched into space. Let's go. All right, there we go. It's sort of attached. <laughs> There's so much movement up the top. I mean, it looks like the, the snake mouth is actually chewing, which is sort of what I wanted it to do, I guess. All right, well, let's launch and then see, do we actually take off? Oh, no, what are they doing? What are they doing? Why? All right, I'm not going to lie. The boosters have been a disaster. I mean, except for that one. Why can't they all be more like that one? Oh, God, this is some weird camera angles. I don't know what... What, <laughs> what are we even looking at? Well, that's um, that loading screen isn't filling me with lots of joy. But my plan here is to launch as soon as we spawn before the Kraken attacks us. All right, so we're away. We are... Oh, no, I've just realized. I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. The reason this wasn't working, the decoupler... You're meant to go there. So they're the launch towers. I'll tell you what, actually. Shall I put launch towers, like, on the boosters as well? Perhaps the more launch towers we have, the less likely we are to experience the Kraken. All right, so boosters go, then the towers fall away, then we decouple, and then we've got the, the snake propulsion for space, because we will be in space by that point, I'm pretty sure. Let's launch. All right, so straight away, let's launch, let's launch. Screw the frame rate, we don't need frames. Right now, let go of the towers. So we should be free to take off. Um, a few small explosions. I think we should be okay. All right, to the next stage. To the next stage. We're fine. We can recover this. We can recover this. Jeb is still okay. He's still okay. Right, I'm not going to lie. I think it's the boosters that are messing us up. Oh, why does this loading screen have to remind me of the terror I've caused? All right, so boosters clearly aren't working. So let's get rid of them. Bin them off. All right, then we'll bin off everything below that point. Boosh. We'll then add a load more of these under there, but I will I will shrink them down a bit, don't worry. So you can sort of see in there we got you got loads more engines now. So now if we copy that down, then we should be good. We should have enough thrust to get up into space. We won't have boosters clashing into each other. And we'll bring pride back to the UK Space Agency. Uh, and let's take a second to appreciate just how many rockets we have attached to this. <laughs> I couldn't even change the staging if I wanted to. Um, anyway, the snake is hungry. Look at the look at the jaws chomping. So, oh no, what happened? What happened? Wait, what the hell? How did that happen? The bottom of my thing fell off. All right, I might have to launch a bit quicker. Launch straight away before the the arse of the snake can fall off. Oh, throttle, throttle up, throttle up, throttle up. There we go. Oh no, there's bars. There's explosions. Balls. I thought that might happen. I think my new... Oh, actually, actually, we're off. We're off. All right, give it more power, Matt. Give it more power. Throttle to the max. We're stuck on the bloody... Oh, have I let go? I haven't let go of the launch things. I think we were trapped on the tower and now... Oh, balls. So the top the top of the snake was stuck on the launch towers. And so the bottom... Well, crash into it, basically. Launch. And I press space bar. Nothing happened. Right, there we go. And then let go of the towers. Let go of the towers. So after a few explosions, they're mostly there for dramatic effect. Have I let go of the towers or did it not register? I don't think it registered. Right, I think this time though, it shows there's potential. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. The Kraken has fully taken hold of that. Um, careful, don't don't whack into Jeb. Blimey hell. I wouldn't want Jeb to get hurt in all this. I mean, yeah, he did survive. That's got to be some kind of points. I'm a bit worried I've created like extraterrestrial life. There's another one over there. They're multiplying... All right, we go again. Right, launch towers are... We've we've disengaged, so we should actually take off this time. Kind of hard to see through all the smoke and flames. Oh, man, look at it. Look at it. I think the snake's turning on us. It's heading straight for Earth. It's going to eat it. I think that's what's happened here. It's heading for Earth. So technically, I did make a world-ending super mega snake. It's not clickbait. You can't tell me otherwise. And on that note, I'll say peace, love, and mega snakes. <laughs> Thanks to the patrons for supporting this video. Literally wouldn't exist without you. Pat on the back for everyone. Bye.